This is one of my staple books. There's a couple of staple books that I absolutely recommend that everybody read. One is Louise Hay. Louise Hay's You Can Heal Your Life. And the other one is this Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. So I will put this again in the email so you guys have it um, when you get the recording so you don't have to worry about finding it. But in our journey of beginning to create and craft this life that we want to create for ourselves. And I'll, and I said this in the welcome video, which you guys will watch in module one, but we are all here for different reasons. We're all here for the same reason, but we're also here for different reasons. And the same reason may be we, we know where our life is just isn't where we want it to be. And we could be looking to better the relationship with ourselves. We could be looking to better the relationship with another person. We could be looking to attract an ideal partner. Um, we could be looking to, you know, bring in a different part of our life and how we're living and how we're showing up and getting rid of the pain of the past finally, so we can move on into the future of where we're going. So again, we're all here for the same thing, but yet we all may have different goals. And those two books across the board meet need for everybody because it's, it's about the foundation. And when in the welcome video, when I talk to you about the table of beliefs, those are going to be really important things that you're going to need to build. And the table of beliefs are the belief systems you hold about yourself and the belief systems that you're telling yourself are true because other people, if we're working with looking for the external environment to guide our life, we're going to be really disappointed. The external environment's not going to guide our life. It's going to be the internal environment. So one of the agreements of what Don Miguel Ruiz talks about in the four agreements is the concept of being impeccable with your word. Okay. So when I say let's be impeccable with your word, it sounds like a very simple task. You're probably like, Donna, this is simple. Like, I get it. Yeah, I, I mean what I say. I say what I mean. I think, what is it? Um, Dr. Sue says, say what you mean, mean what you say, because the people who matter don't mind and the people who mind don't matter. Right? So if people aren't again with your word, that's okay. They have their own reasons behind it. We don't need their validation. But when I talk about being impeccable with your word, it's the understanding that words aren't only language. They're not only a symbol of how we communicate to one another, but they're also the power of how we create with life, right? They're the power of creation. We, if we go back to the biblical reference, God did not create this world just saying, just being and creating the world. He actually spoke it, right? The Bible says he spoke and let there be light. He, and they had to be co create in order for the, for us and everything to be created. There had to be a, a mixture of things happening. And one of those things is actual voice and word. So your words aren't only things that we use to communicate with one another, but it's really important that you get and understand that the words that you speak, the actual words that come out of your mouth actually create. And I think we could all test to this example. How many of you, because I know I've, I still do this, but not as often as I used to, is you wake up in the morning and it's just a horrible, it's just one of those days, right? To toothbrush falls in the toilet bowl. You bang your head on the thing on the way out. You're in behind a bus, right? You're late to work, but sure enough, you get behind the bus that the bus drive is slow and the lights are going on. And you're just like, man, it's just going to be, this is going to be a horrible day. And you speak it. This is just going to be a horrible day. What do you think happens after that? Pretty much everything goes wrong, right? It's just like one of those things. But do you ever have those moments where you just wake up and for whatever reason, you feel a lightness in your step. You feel this peace with inside you. You feel like you're not even sure why, because maybe there's things that are going on around you that don't even warrant this lightness and this peace in you. But you just feel like today is going to be a great day. I just feel it. I just know it's going to be a good day. And then inevitably that day ends up being a great day. You know, and maybe someone buys you a cup of coffee or maybe, you know, you got an invitation to go to lunch with someone who you didn't expect. Or maybe you had an extra hour for a break and you're like, man, I could go outside and sit at the park and enjoy some sunlight in my face, which I normally didn't get to do because my 12 o'clock phone canceled. This is a great day, right? So again, the words we speak are, are power to create. And it's through your word that you're going to manifest everything right? Everything. There's a combination between intention, the word we speak, and then the feelings that we feel. If you've ever been confused on why things aren't happening for you the way that you want them to, it's because you're missing one of these pieces. You're either missing the intention, like a clear intention and direction of what you want. 
you're either missing actually verbalizing and speaking it or you're missing the feeling behind it. Because you could say, I'm gonna win a million dollars today. Today's my day, I'm going down the lottery, shit man, I'm going, I'm, it's my ticket, I got it, I'm winning. But inside, you, you'll never win that, are you crazy, are you kidding me? You're never gonna win that. Inside, like we don't come from people, from families that have money, we come from families that are like middle class people, right, that's the inner voice. Money's not gonna come to you, no matter what you do, it's not gonna come to you because you're gonna, you're gonna just detract it because you don't have the feeling, you could say it, but if you don't have the feeling behind it, nothing is going to manifest. So you need those three keys to success. You have to have absolute 100% clear intention. You have to have the word to be able to speak it. And number three, you have to have the feeling behind it. And this is something that I work with, with my husband. So I'm remarried. I don't know if you guys know that. I was through a divorce and remarried. And I have two girls. And now Ashley's 18 and Rebecca's 16. So I've been doing this work a long time when they were just like little babies. But what will, Ashley will come to the table and, and my older daughter seems to like really nice things. So she wanted, I guess, like a Michael Kors bag or something. And my husband said, oh, you, you can't, like, you can't afford it. Like, that's like a waste of money. Why would you want to do something like that? That's not a good way to spend your money. And I, 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 I can understand where he's coming from. But I, had, I went right back in there and I said, you know what? No, we're not going to squash possibility for anybody. Because whether it costs a dollar or it costs a million dollars, if that person wants it, then they should have it. But it doesn't mean that you need to spend it unwisely. But what it means is saying that I may not be able to have it now, but I'm going to set the intention that I will have it. And I'm going to set the intention that I'm going to buy the picture. And when $10 comes in, I'll put $2 in my account for this pocketbook. I'll put a certain amount in savings and I'll put a certain amount of spending. And when that envelope fills up with enough for my pocketbook, then I'm going to go buy it. Right? So we, we don't want to squash our possibility and we have to be careful what we say because you could have anything it is you want. And I mean that everybody who's listening to this call right now, you could have anything you want. And that could be a home, that could be a partner, that could be inner and personal peace, that could be just the love of self and the world. It could be literally anything. And I want everybody to kind of understand and see the work that I've done in the past I would say five years, I have catapulted my, who I am and the energy and the people that I hang around with. And I have put myself in the last five years around some of the most successful people in this world. Now, when I say successful, I define success, not necessarily because someone's making a lot of money or has a nice home. I define success as someone who is truly happy. Not, not based on material things. They could have material things or they cannot have material things. To me, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that they are operating authentically of who they are and they're happy. That they're, they're, not, they're, they're not worried. They wake up in peace. They have enough money to live the way that they want. They have enough to give away to the, way that, the people that they want. They have time to spend with the people that they love. That to me is successful. The one thing that I have noticed among Every single one of these successful people, and I've had hours of conversations, if not days or weeks of conversations with these people, is that you are no different. They have the same exact struggles that we have. They go through the same ups and downs that we have. The difference is they have clear intention, 100% clear attention of who they are and what they want. And number two, they're willing to allow their body to feel uncomfortable while going after the goal. Number one thing that we will do in growing and developing ourselves is the moment that things get tough or uncomfortable or it's not easy, we begin to start to get worried and then we begin to tell our story. Well, see, maybe I shouldn't have started this anyway. Anytime I start something, this is what happens. Anytime I develop into something, this is what, see, this is what happens to me. We begin all of these things. The difference between the people who are the most successful people is that they're willing to be uncomfortable. They're willing to make sure that they do whatever it takes. Like for instance, I had a person who was taking on a new development in her life and she needed to wake up at 4 a.m. every morning and sometimes 2. She would wake up at 2 a.m. to do the work between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. because that was the time zone between the person that she was working with in order to get it done and she did it. She woke up at 2 a.m. and did the work from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. because it was that important to her. It was that she was so committed to this end result that she was willing to do the work. And as you guys go through this program, your body is going to kick. Your body is going to say, I want you to stay the same. 
your body is going to say, this is great. Let's start. This is so much fun. Great, great, great. And then by week three or four or five, you know what? Your friend's going to call you to go out to dinner. Or the, you know, the 12 o'clock call is like, mm, you know what? Maybe I have a lot. Things are going to start coming in. It just happens. You need to remain defiantly committed that for these next 12 weeks, there's nothing else more important than you and this. That is it. There's, no, there's nothing else more. Now, I'm not saying to abandon your children, people, right? <laughs> or abandon work. You still have to feed them. All right. Well, we'll give them a meal every once in a while. But what I'm saying is, is that your body is going to be uncomfortable and that's your key to success because your word is like a sword with two edges. Your word can create the most beautiful and idyllic dream, but it could also destroy literally everything around you. And everybody has seen this, the little example of the little plant on the internet where the little girl spoke to the plant one day and spoke beautiful, beautiful words to the plant and that plant survived. And then on the other side spoke to the same plant and that plant died. But she's because she spoke to it badly. She said, you're ugly, you're horrible, you're stupid, I hate you. There's nothing good about you. You're disgusting. You shouldn't have even been born, that type of thing. And if you haven't seen it, it's an amazing thing. Just Google it. Google two plants and the way you speak to it. One survived and that other one didn't survive. So words have the power to create the most beautiful dream or can destroy everything around you. Words also have the power to set you free in a level that you've never experienced before. Or it has the power to enslave you. And you create prison bars that no one else has to create for you that you create your own internal personal prison. And that's what I want you to think about today is how much, if we on a scale of one to 10, is how much of my time is operating in, in, in dream and in, in intention and in focus and future pace, or how much of my time is operating in the past, the enslavement, the prison, the keeping me small. There's no judgment, there's no blame, there's no condemnation. You didn't do anything wrong or right. You did the best you could with what you had until you today. But guess what? Like Maya Angelou says, after today, you, now you know better, you get to do better. Because words could literally change the makeup of your physiology, your, phys your physiological body. So what I want you to do, I want everybody here from this day forward, this is something I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you my secret sauce, my secret weapon. And actually, I could probably close the course if I gave it to you, but I won't. Because <laughs> this seriously is the secret sauce weapon. These three words, three words, in the past. So when you say, oh, like, you know, I don't know. Um, X, Y, Z is really hard for me. Or, I, you know, I, I, I tend to, you know, I'm really, I'm not really good with reading. What I want you to say, in the past... X, Y, Z is hard for me. But now I'm learning how to develop this skill. Now I'm learning how to do something new. Now I'm learning how to bring something in in your life. So anytime you find yourself with critical language or with language that's keeping you in a lack-based mindset, and the way we know we're in a lack-based mindset is you don't feel good. You may be snippy. You may just not be feeling good. You're feeling cranky. That's your indica indication that you're operating in lack. And that's where you just be aware and, and, and notice the thoughts that you're having and replace them, even in your own language, in the past, in the past. And then you replace it with positive language because our words can, again, literally change the makeup of our physiology. I don't want to get into it now. I'll get into it a little later. But the, the longer that we are in dis-ease with our body is the more that disease does come into our body. Because what ends up happening is when a thought comes in and it develops an emotion, that emotion, if it doesn't go anywhere, it turns into like fight or flight mode and your body is trying to fight it. And if it doesn't actually get resolved or if you don't allow it to move through you, it's going to find a place to kind of hang out and it can hang out in your organs. It can hang out in your bones. It can hang out in your muscles. And that's why people have a lot of like this, these, um, like, you know, maybe GERD or they have um, inflammation where you go to the doctor, the doctor says, nothing's wrong with you. You have inflammation. It's because you're holding on unresolved emotions. And if those unresolved emotions aren't addressed with and they're, they're, they can't flow through your body, they're going to turn into disease. You're going to start seeing things happen. And this is where I draw the line in the sand where I'm not, I don't know exactly what your, your struggle was or how much you're still holding on to or how much you're willing to let go. But here's one thing that I just want to kind of leave with you to think about and chew on. No one is worth your health. No one. I don't care who they are. They're not worth you being sick. 
You were born with a reason to be here. You have a passion and you have a purpose. You are God's creation. And again, I use God and, and for everyone who uses universe or you could put in source, whatever is comfortable for you, but you are God's creation. And when you're not operating at your peak potential, then you're not operating in God's view for your world. You're operating in the world's view and you're operating in a reactive mode versus a responsive mode. And again, this is not to say you're doing anything bad or wrong, but it's just to ask yourself, wow, have I gotten off track? Am I off track? Where do I need to get back on track? And not allowing other people to literally make me sick. Not just like they make me sick in my mindset, but they literally are making my body sick. Because if you're experiencing any sort of dis disease in your body, it could be because of those unresolved emotions. And what I what I wanted, um, I know we're going on a little longer, but what I what I wanted to give you was an actual scientific example because a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with he you here over the next 12 weeks is definitely based upon my experience, but it's also based on scientific examples and not just inspirational woo woo type of talk. And there was a science experiment that had, um, there was a particular hotel chain that had maids that were working in this. And I, I don't know, I hate to use the word maid. I don't know what they would say now, but let's just say they had these maids that were working in this hotel chain and they were overweight. They had a lot of health issues. And what they did is they took half of the maids and they told these maids that, did you know that your work is actually exercise? And did you know that when you're in there and you're working, you're actually losing, you're, you're burning um, extra, you know, a car, you know, cardio that you, you, it has the potential to lose a little bit of inches on your body. And did you know, like, as you're moving, you're going to feel better and you're going to feel great. And as, as you're working and as you, if, as you drink more, you're just going to see yourself feel better and you're going to just feel overall better. And the other one, they told not nothing. And they gave it a certain amount of time. Wouldn't you know it? They didn't change anything. They didn't change the job. They didn't add in any workouts. They changed nothing. The people that were told that they, that were, their job is a workout and that they're going to lose weight. They're going to feel better, that they're going to feel better than they ever have before. Physically lost inches in their body. They lost weight. Their blood numbers came back better than they were before. So there is statistical proof that what we believe could either help us or hurt us. Now here's, here's the truth bomb that I'm gonna put in here. We could tell ourselves something to believe, but how often do we take what someone else says about us and believe it? Let's say I have a teacher that says, Donna, I'm so proud of you. you were, you're such a good student. You did so good, you're so smart. You're gonna grow up and you're gonna be smart and you're gonna be great. And I take that, that's great, right? Because maybe I, maybe I will take that on and I will grow up to be a smart, great person. But what happens if I have a teacher that says, you're stupid? You're stupid. You, 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 you're not, your family comes from a family that doesn't know and blah, blah, blah. And, and you don't do anything right. And every time I go to school, I get the red marks and nope, Donna, see, like you, you don't get it. You're just not smart enough. You really shouldn't be in this class. Have you talked to your parents about getting out of a class? How, I mean, I hate to say it, but there are teachers that still say that today. Maybe not so directly, but they still say, now what about that child? That child could grow up feeling they're stupid when they're not. They could take on someone else's opinion of them as their own. So this is where you need to be careful is what opinions are you taking on? And are you taking on your own opinion? Are you taking on someone else's? What do you believe? Because if you, whatever word you are receiving as true is going to be true to you. And that's where we have to ask ourselves, number one, does everybody believe the same thing? Is it true? Is it fact or is it fiction? Because feelings are not facts, right? They're not facts. We, we have to find the truth in, our, in ourselves. And by being impeccable to your word is you are not using the word against yourself. Uh, against yourself. So for instance, like I, I'll use that teacher example. And let's say this teacher, call, like I, I'm the teacher and I call you stupid. And it appears that my words are being used against you because I'm calling you stupid, but it's actually really, I'm using my words against myself because you're going to hate me for that. And your hate is going to turn on me and hate is not good for me. So now that, that word, I'm not being impeccable to my word. I'm now using it as a, as a weapon to hurt someone else, but that weapon is now also coming back and it's hurting me back. It's that energy that I am using on myself. So it's almost like I'm shooting myself. 
and we're not being impeccable to my word, right? But when I love myself and I'm impeccable to my word, I'm only going to use words that raise up. I'm only going to use words that express love in all of my interactions. And if I have something that I'm, that I'm worried about or someone has done me wrong, it doesn't mean I have to excuse that. It doesn't mean that the, there doesn't need to be a conversation about it. But guess what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to go start talking about that person. I'm not going to go at the water cooler and bring it up. I'm not going to go talk to Joe, the dry cleaner and Susie at Starbucks and call my mom and see whoever I could talk to to bring up how, how just, you know, wrongly I've been and how horrible it is. No, I'm not going to bring that up because then that's not being impeccable to my word. I'm actually only hurting myself because what I'm doing is I'm creating chaos. I'm creating, I'm, I'm allowing the story to continue. And what do we know about what we put out is what we get back. So if we're operating that way, guess who we're going to be surrounded by? We're going to be surrounded by people who complain. We're going to be surrounded by people who always feel like they're unjust, that they, didn't, they got the short end of the stick or that they didn't, that the penny wasn't up for them, whatever it is. Does anyone want to be around that? No. So you got to be impeccable to your word and knowing and talking to yourself and receiving and acting in love. And even when things haven't gone your way and even when you've been wronged, again, that we, we need to find justice. I'm not saying that justice doesn't need to be had, but just be careful of the words you use. Because remember, whatever you're speaking, you are creating, number one. And number two, they're coming back to you. And the only thing that I want everybody in this group to kind of consider is that even from this day forward, that we are going to put a circle of love around each and every one of us. We are putting that circle of light and of love and an intention and of expansion that even in the most difficult times that we are walking in love, we are walking in grace and we are going to rise above and we're not going to be reactive. Chickens are creatures that are very reactive. When things go on and there's a storm, the chickens will almost run over each other to find shelter. Eagles, on the other hand, are very graceful creatures. When a storm comes, the eagle doesn't run away from the storm the eagle assesses the storm and it asks what it figures out which way the wind is going and it flies with the storm. So ask yourself, are you a chicken or are you an eagle? I know these are weird analogies, but these are all things that you need to keep in front of you. Right? As I choose, and this is what I say, even when I'm in the worst part I could possibly be in something that's going on in my life, if I just think about that one analogy, am I a chicken or am I an eagle? The moment I say, freaking, I'm an eagle. I'm not going to be the chicken that automatically I begin to think, okay, maybe I shouldn't say that, or maybe here's how I'm going to, you know, kind of do this. It gets me to think about how I want to react. Um, lastly, how we're going to close today is understanding that being impeccable to your word is the correct way to use your energy. And it's understanding the law of reciprocity. So there's a lot of laws of the universe, but the three laws that I want to share with you today is if you want love, give love. If you want grace, give grace. If you want peace, be peace, right? You have to give what it is you want, even money. If you want to attract abundance and money in your life, then you need to give money away. It's actually opposite to what the world tells us, but that's the law of reciprocity. What it is you want is the, what you need to give. And it actually, even in the money example, most people will be like, well, I don't have money and I want money. So why would I give away money? And that's exactly why you need to give it away. And I, again, I'm not saying to empty out your bank account. I'm saying to buy someone a cup of coffee or to do a little something for someone, because when we try to keep things in and we're worried, we're very constricted. And when we're giving out and we're giving, we're, we're, we're expansive. And even just thinking about it, right? Your shoulders go back. You could feel the weight lifted. And also understanding that most people, and this is something for everybody to make a commitment to, is that you are going to see there's a veil that's going to lift in each and every one of you. And I'm not sure when it will come. It will come for everybody. But each and every one of you is going to get this veil lifted where you're just going to see the world a little bit differently. You're just going to see people a little, and you're going to see the chaos that ensues in people. You're going to see the chaos that ensues in everyday life. And you're, because you're not going to be in that chaos anymore, and you're going to notice this difference. What you're going to notice is that most people talk and use words to perpetuate pain and gain validation and spread poison. Most people use words to spread misery. And when you don't 
allow yourself to be caught up in that energy, you actually give yourself an immune boost. It's like a flu shot <laughs> for your internal guidance. You give yourself immunity. You allow yourself to have fertile ground to grow and you allow yourself to expand. And this is perfect landing point because when you watch today's welcome video, there's, a, there's an acorn that I'm going to have you, you'll understand what I'm talking about when you see it. But this is a perfect landing point for you because we're, 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 we're beginning to sort of settle our roots in the soil for the next 12 weeks. 